Okay, in this video, we'll be talking about the treatment of ulcerative colitis. In my previous video, we talked about the clinical symptoms, the diagnosis of ulcerative colitis in detail. The link of that video is given in the description below. Now, so going to the treatment of ulcerative colitis. As I said in my previous video, that ulcerative colitis is a chronic disease. And in the chronic disease, uh, these patients get these exacerbations. And these exacerbations are the worsening of the diseases. And after these worsening, they get back to their normal state. Now, in a, those worsening or exacerbations of ulcerative colitis are called as acute severe ulcerative colitis or fulminant colitis. And presence of both indicates acute severe ulcerative colitis. Presence of greater than or equal to six bowel movements every day with one or more than one signs of systemic toxicity like tachycardia, fever, hemoglobin less than 10.5 gram per deciliter patient having bloody diarrhea, losing blood. ESR greater than 30 millimeter per hour. Now, these are if these two things are present, it indicates that the patient has acute severe ulcerative colitis. Now, usually the patients of ulcerative colitis can be man managed on an outpatient department, but if the patient gets an exacerbation and the patient has acute severe ulcerative colitis, in that case, you have to admit the patient in the hospital. After admitting the patient to the hospital, you have to send certain investigations. In the investigations, you have to perform abdominal x-ray. You have to look for any signs of perforation, any air under the diaphragm because it can cause perforation. You have to look for ESR, you have to look for CBC, look for hemoglobin level and you have to do stool for C. diff toxin. Now, uh, in these patients of ulcerative colitis, usually these patients are taking many antibiotic drugs to treat these conditions, treat the bloody diarrhea and they have they are very prone to get Clostridium difficile infection. 50% of the ulcerative colitis patients have Clostridium difficile infection. You have to do stool for C. diff toxin. Then, you have to immediately initiate IV corticosteroid treatment. You have to start IV solomidrol, IV methylprednisolone. Now, I'll talk about what is the dose of IV corticosteroid later. You have to initiate in, uh, IV steroids immediately in patients presenting to you with exacerbation of ulcerative colitis or acute severe ulcerative colitis. Now, in the chronic treatment, steroids are not recommended. But in patients who present to you with exacerbation, you start them on IV steroids because it's really important that you reduce the inflammation that is going on in the gut and induction of remission drug. Now, what are these drugs and what are the doses of steroids? We'll discuss that in a while. You have to give them IV fluids because these patients are dehydrated and, and in shock. You have to replete the electrolytes and you have to monitor them by serial abdominal examination and abdominal x-rays. You must look for toxic megacolon in these patients. You perform serial CRP levels. CRP levels are very important as, as we discussed that uh, elevated CRP and hypoalbuminemia are poor prognostic factors in patients with ulcerative colitis. Patients with frequent bowel movement and an elevated CRP on day 3 to 5 of the steroid treatment indicates that if the patient is not responding to uh, steroids, it means that that patient is having increased bowel movement, elevated CRP despite being on steroids. This patient might need surgical treatment because if the patient is not responding to steroids, this patient might need surgical removal of the colon that is colectomy. So, you have to consult surgery on the third to fifth day if the patient does not respond to steroids. Other indications of surgery include toxic megacolon, bowel perforation, hemorrhage and sepsis in these patients. It's important that you avoid NSAIDs and opiates and anticholinergics in patients with acute severe ulcerative colitis because NSAIDs inhibit prostaglandins and prostaglandins are important protective lining in the gut. They are prostaglandins that are involved in the healing process and NSAIDs block that healing process. So, generally in patients with uh, ulcerative colitis, avoid NSAIDs for pain relief. Avoid opiates and anticholinergic because they decrease the gut motility and especially in patients with toxic megacolon, these patients have decreased gut motility and will result in constipation and increase uh, uh, tenesmus, feeling of incomplete evacuation, abdominal cramps in these patients. So, you have to avoid NSAIDs, opiates and anticholinergic in these patients. Neither total parental nutrition nor any empiric antibiotic therapy are recommended in these exacerbations because this is not due to any infection. So, in, if you find Clostridium difficile, then you have to start the patient on vancomycin. But if there is no Clostridium difficile infection, usually these are, uh, uh, these are treated with steroids and they respond to steroids. 
So this was the treatment of patients with ag acute exacerbation of ulcerative colitis, acute severe ulcerative colitis in which you have to start uh, uh, corticosteroids immediately, do repeated x-rays, perform abdominal examinations, perform serial CRPs if the patient does not respond after 5 days, consult the surgical department for colectomy in these patients. Now generally, when a patient of ulcerative colitis comes to you, you the goal of the treatment, the go goal of chronic treatment is that patient does not get these exacerbations, patient does not get these acute severe ulcerative colitis, permanent colitis episodes and patient has a chronic uh, control over the disease, the patient chronic symptoms are also being in control. Now initially symptom remission is the main important thing that patient has no blood in stool, no discomfort in abdomen and in the long term the important thing is mucosal healing that the mucosa of the patient, the gut of the patient starts in the healing phase. Resolution of the inflammation seen on colonoscopy is the goal of the long term treatment. Now if a patient of ulcerative colitis comes to you, the American College of Gastroenterology has divided the patient of ulcerative colitis into three categories mild to moderate, moderate to severe and acute severe ulcerative colitis or fulminant colitis. I have discussed that how do you classify these patients based on the endoscopic features, based on the clinical features, based on CRP, ESR in my previous video on the diagnosis of ulcerative colitis. Now when a patient of mild to moderate uh, severity comes to you and you want to start induction of remission therapy, the first line drug in these patients is 5-aminosalicylic acid which is misalamine. Misalamine is the main drug. Misalamine reduces the migration of inflammatory cells to the gut and it reduces the inflammation in the GI tract in the colon. So 5-ASA, 5-aminosalicylic acid is the first and the main drug that is being used in the treatment of ulcerative colitis. Now you have to see if the patient is having proctitis. Proctitis is basically inflammation of the rectum. If the patient is having inflammation of the rectum, usually when you perform DRE in these patients, sometimes your finger is full of blood in these patients because rectum is almost always involved in patients with ulcerative colitis. So in patient, if the patient is having proctitis, what you can do is that you can start rectal misalamine. Rectal misalamine comes in the form of misalamine suppositories and misalamine enema. 1 gram per rectal once daily suppository of misalamine can be given or enema 4 gram per rectal daily can be given at the bedtime. With that, if the patient is having left sided or extensive colitis, if the patient is not just having proctitis but the patient is also having full left sided involvement or extensive colitis, extensive colitis is the one that involves the colon from splenic flexure to the cecum and left sided is the one that involves the colon from the splenic flexure to the rectum. So if the patient is having left sided disease or extensive colitis in these patients you have to give oral mesalamine. Oral 5 amino salicylic acid is given, mesalamine 2.4 gram per orally once daily is given. With oral you also have to tell the patient that they will have to take rectal enema 4 gram per rectal daily at bedtime. Bedtime rectal misalamine enema is also given with oral 5 ASA. Now a problem that would come to you in most of the time that patient would refuse uh, going for treatment with suppositories and enema. In such cases patient priority is also kept in mind with that you can start oral treatment as well. So if a patient comes to you with proctitis that patient is to be given rectal misalamine, misalamine suppositories or misalamine enema. If the patient is having left side or extensive colitis in that patient oral misalamine is given with rectal misalamine. If the patient does not tolerate 5 amino salicylic acid, if the patient does not tolerate misalamine or if you are unable to achieve remission with misalamine in mild to moderate cases. In mild to moderate cases, if these drugs fail or if the patient does not tolerate these drugs, in that case you will have to give rectal corticosteroids because systemic corticosteroids have a, a large number of side effects. So you do not prefer systemic uh, uh, corticosteroids. Initially, you can start with rectal corticosteroids like budesonide. Budesonide 2 milligram per rectally twice daily for 2 weeks, then 2 milligram per rectally once daily at that time. So you taper the steroid dose. Now remember, when a patient came with acute fulminant colitis, in fulminant colitis, we straight away gave steroids. 
you straight away gave IV steroids in that patient. But if a patient comes to you with mild to moderate severity in that patient for induction of remission, we start with misalamine. If the, if the misalamine, there is no response to misalamine, then we go for rectal corticosteroid. If, and if the rectal corticosteroid does not respond, then we go for the IV one. Or you can use oral budesonide 9 mg per orally once daily or oral prednisolone 40 to 60 mg per orally once daily. So you also have an oral option. But if the patient responds to rectal, rectal have le lesser side effect profile as compared to oral corticosteroids. So that was all the treatment of patient with mild to moderate severity. Now coming to patient with moderate to severe involvement. If the patient is having moderate to severe ulcerative colitis, in that patient you have to straight away start from oral corticosteroid. So in fulminant colitis, it's IV corticosteroid. In patient to moderate to severe colitis, you go for oral corticosteroid. In patients for, with mild to moderate colitis, in that patient you go for 5-mesalamine. And if the patient does not respond, you go for rectal. And if the patient does not respond to rectal, then you can go for IV. In moderate to severe, you can start with oral corticosteroid, oral budesonide, 9 mg per orally once daily is given, prednisolone, 40 to 60 mg per orally once daily is given. Or you can give anti-TNF therapy in these patients. Other than corticosteroids, the other option you have, if you don't want to give steroids to the patient, the other drugs include infleximab with or without azathioprine. Now remember, this is all about induction therapy. In the induction, you want to induce remission. You want to remit the symptoms of the patient. In these induction therapies, what you are doing is that you are giving uh, steroids, you are giving uh, cer certain drugs like mesalamine to in reduce the inflammation. Now, when the patient has, uh, the, the remission has been induced and patient has now control over the disease, for the maintenance, you never give steroids. You never give steroids for the maintenance of disease. In the maintenance of disease, mesalamine can be continued, uh, azathioprine can be continued, but corticosteroids are not used in the long term. So, corticosteroids only for the induction of remission. Now, in moderate to severe, uh, anti-TNF therapy can also be used instead of uh, corticosteroids, infleximab, adalimumab, golimumab, with or without azathioprine. Now, the research has been done on infleximab in combination with azathioprine. And infleximab in combination with azathioprine is uh, used in the induction therapy. Azathioprine monotherapy cannot be used in induction of the remission therapy. In the induction of remission therapy, infleximab in combination with azathioprine is used. But if the patient is, uh, uh, is to be put on maintenance therapy, on maintenance therapy, you can singly use azathioprine. If the patient fails to respond to uh, anti-TNF therapy, in that case, you, can, you have other drugs like integrin receptor antagonists like vidulizumab. Now, these are monoclonal antibodies that bind to the antibodies that are involved in the inflammation of the gut. So, oral corticosteroids easily available. Anti-TNF drugs are another option. If, anti, if the patient does not respond to anti-TNF drugs, then you have integrin receptor antagonists like vidulizumab, which might not be available in many healthcare settings. Other options include JAK3 kinase inhibitors, basically tofacitinib. Tofacitinib, these are tyrosine kinase inhibitors and they reduce the inflammation, they reduce the immune response to the gut, therefore they reduce the inflammation. So, for induction of remission in moderate to severe ulcerative colitis, you can use oral corticosteroids, anti-TNF therapy or integrin receptor in, uh, blockers or JAK3 inhibitors. So, the easily available drugs are usually oral corticosteroids. Now, when you want to shift the patient to the maintenance therapy, in, for the maintenance therapy, you can simply use mesalamine or you can simply use azathioprine. Mainly, mesalamine is commonly used drug. Now, if the patient comes to you with acute severe ulcerative colitis and acute severe ulcerative colitis, you bombard the patient with IV corticosteroids because it's very important to inhibit the immune response. IV corticosteroids, methylprednisolone also comes with the name of solomidrol, 60 mg IV once daily for 7 days is given. Now, once the patient has come out of the uh, exacerbation, you shift the patient to mesalamine, azathioprine, you do not continue steroids for long term. If the patient fails to re uh, achieve remission, then you can use cyclosporine or infleximab. These are immunomodulator drugs and they reduce the immune response and reduce the inflammation in the gut. Remember, for the induction, it's the systemic steroids that can be used. For the maintenance, you have to use steroids 
sparing agents like misalamine so in patients with mild to moderate you use misalamine as a first line therapy and rectal misalamine in patients with moderate to severe you use oral corticosteroid in patients with severe ulcerative colitis you use corticosteroids iv iv methylprednisolone but once the patient is out of the uh, um, exacerbation you shift the patient to a steroid sparing agent like misalamine only disease monitoring is done by endoscopy flexible sigmoidoscopy 3 to 6 months after starting the treatment you see that how much the inflammation has resolved if it is not possible or if the patient refuses to undergo these invasive procedures then you can perform fecal calprotectin levels less than 150 mg per kg predicts that patient has gone into remission other than that as, as i said that ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease equally pose the risk of colon cancer so you should start screening 8 to 10 years after the initial diagnosis of ulcerative colitis because it almost takes 8 to 10 years uh, of the ulcerative colitis for the cancers to develop in the body ileo colonoscopy with biopsy is done every 1 to 5 years depending upon the severity each year you can plan colonoscopy closer within 1 year within 2 years or if the patient if the patient is having normal colonoscopy then you can uh, do it 5 years later remember the side effects of misalamine misalamine causes gi irritation sulfasalazine is basically a combination of 5 amino salicylic acid and sulfa pyridine now remember as i said in my previous video that usually ulcerative colitis is associated with arthritis and usually these patients of ulcerative colitis also have concomitant rheumatoid arthritis in those patients sulfasalazine is used it also comes in your exams it is a very important exam point that if a patient is having rheumatoid arthritis with ulcerative colitis as ulcerative colitis most common extra intestinal manifestations are the skeletal problems you use sulfasalazine sulfasalazine 5 amino salicylic acid with sulfa pyridine now 5 amino salicylic acid remains in gut and it acts in the gut and reduces inflammation in ulcerative colitis sulfa pyridine on the other hand is absorbed in the blood and it is a drug that has anti rheumatoid action and it treats the rheumatoid arthritis it is used in rheumatoid arthritis patient and adverse effect include megaloblastic anemia folate deficiency itp transient oligospermia but it resolves as soon as the drug is stopped allergic reaction now remember megaloblastic anemia and folate deficiency are very important now remember ulcerative colitis can be cured surgically surgical treatment is a curative treatment in ulcerative colitis that is not the case in crohn's disease because crohn's disease involve the gut from mouth till the anal canal but ulcerative colitis only involves the colon now if you remove the colon patient can be cured surgically in the past uh, appendectomy was performed to cure uh, ulcerative colitis but now the studies have shown that ulcerative colitis can be cured by proctocolectomy removal of the colon it reduces the risk of colon cancer indications include toxic megacolon bowel perforation multi organ failure severe hematochezia blood in stools refractive ulcerative colitis dysplasia or carcinoma restorative proctocolectomy is performed what you do in restorative proct proctocolectomy is that you remove the colon from cecum to the anal canal all of it is removed then a loop of ileum is taken and loop of ileum is uh, formed as a rectal pouch and it is anastomosed with the anal canal and anal sphincter which acts as a rectal pouch and uh, stores the feces so restorative proctocolectomy where the colon is removed and ileal pouch anal anastomosis is formed that acts as a rectum the most common immediate complication of surgery is includes anastomosis leakage and pelvic sepsis late complications include bowel stricture fertility issues and sexual dysfunction if the nerves are damaged most common late complication in these patients is pouchitis presentation is uh, that there is increased stool frequency and malaise because that uh, pouch of ileum can get irritated and inflamed that can result in uh, diarrhea in these patients complications of ulcerative colitis include risk of cancer toxic megacolon fulminant colitis gi bleeding perforation and colonic stricture so this was all about the treatment of ulcerative colitis if you like my video please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other lectures on gastroenterology check out my lectures on ecg neurology emergency medicine lectures the link of those playlists is given in this the description below we talked about what is acute severe ulcerative colitis you admit the patient you steroid the uh, start the iv steroids you do serial crps you monitor the patient by uh, repeated crp levels abdominal exam if the patient does not respond go for colectomy 
avoid NSAIDs, opioids, anticholinergics in these patients. The goal of the uh, therapy is to uh, remit the symptoms and long-term mucosal healing. The classification of the disease in mild to moderate severity, you use rectal mesalamine. If the patient does not respond to rectal mesalamine, rectal corticosteroids can be used or oral corticosteroids can be used. If the patient is having moderate to severe intense, intensity of ulcerative colitis, oral corticosteroids are used or oral anti-TNF therapy can be used. If it fails, then integrin receptor antagonist can be used. JAK3 inhibitors are also an option. Acute severe ulcerative colitis is treated with IV corticosteroids, methylprednisolone. Induction is done with systemic corticosteroids. Maintenance is always done with mesalamine or steroid sparing drugs. Disease monitoring is done by repeated endoscopies and fecal calprotectin levels. Colorectal screening must be done in these patients. Side effects of mesalamine and sulfasalazine. Sulfasalazine used in rheumatoid arthritis patients. What are the surgical treatments that you have? Proctocolectomy is curative in these patients. The complications of surgery, late complication pouchitis, complications of ulcerative colitis. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other videos on infectious medicine, emergency medicine, ECG lectures. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram where I upload reels on different product tips. Thank you very much.